Hey guys, Matt Holland here, and um, today I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial, probably about 15 minutes, on uh, what I do when I make a track, and my presets on various pieces of software, including Logic and Gearbox. Let me just quickly run you through the. Let me just quickly run you through the gear that I use in making my productions. I've got two main recording guitars, one of which is my Ibanez RG three uh, seven three two one. It's pretty much just the cheapest seven string I could find, and it's you know. Lots of people say they hate the pickups. I think they're quite nice and plays really well, so I'm gonna keep it for the long term, for the long run. And uh, I use my Gibson SG for most of my recordings, and in that I've got a Seymour Duncan Jeff Beck humbucker, and I usually have that uh, strung with a gauge 13 to 60 and tuned to drop A flat, which is the same tuning that most other bands in this genre use. I'll be showing you how to make a sort of gent slash groove metal track. Not sure what people call it nowadays, don't really care. And anyway, here is my Line 6 preset. And I'm using the Solo 100 head, which I believe is based on a Soldano. I can't remember which model. But I have about 41% gain. And I've got the bass on 71%. And the middle is just on 11. And the treble is on 8. And the presence is on 8 also. I keep the volume around 5 because it then it doesn't clip when I'm uh, going into Logic. I have uh, quite a harsh noise gate on there. As you can see the threshold is very high and the decay is also very fast. Uh, I sometimes use the Weeper if I want to twang. I have it set to about here. just adds a really sort of extra boost to treble and bite without having to do it through the amp. The Tube Screamer is uh, it has got very low gain on it but it's got very low drive on it, but the other two controls are just left as it comes. I only occasionally use the delay if I'm soloing. I sometimes have it pre the amp, and I sometimes have it after the amp. Uh, I use the compressor if I really want to get that fat, rich, sort of modern kill switch engage sound almost. And I have the EQ, which just boosts, boosts the low ends a bit, because I find with Gearbox sometimes it does sound a bit sterile and there's a lack of low end and doesn't really feel organic and I add a bit of upper mid range as well which just really helps the guitar cut through in a mix. Uh, the chorus is just there for a bit of fatness and as you can see the mix is very low, the speed is very low and the depth is very low but it, it just adds something small to the sound and I very rarely use the reverb if I'm recording a solo but I usually do all of that in Logic because the plugins are just much better. Okay, that's pod fun. I would go for the metal pack, but I don't really see the value in it because I might as well save for an axe effects or something instead. Okay, and here's Logic, and this is a track I made a couple of days ago, and uh, yeah, this is it really. There's two main guitar tracks that span the whole track. There's two heavily processed tracks, and these are different guitar tones I'm using here and these are the original two tones and for the drums in this song I'm using Superior Drummer which I don't know what you use, uh, it could be Addictive or BFD, they've all got their merits I'm just most comfortable with Superior Drummer and I really like the samples and I know how to use them so uh, I basically use the, I use the New York uh, Avatar kit and it's the preset kit I use the Ludwig Black Beauty Snare and I use a stacked cymbal on this one because I find that is probably my favourite cymbal to ride on. I don't know why with the snare drum being panned slightly to the left I quite like uh, the cymbal I'm riding on to be panned to the other side. And this is it sounds like that. Really nice sort of bright trashy sound. Sounds quite unique. Uh, I use just the basic kick drum as well and that's weird why let me change the hi-hats but I use the hi-hats it normally comes with the Zogs I think they've got a really nice bright sound and as far as the mixer goes I don't like to use these presets over here because I find they can really limit the sound of the drum kit especially within a mix they sound quite good I would imagine they'd be quite good if you're using it with V drums or, or something but when I'm using it in a project, I generally don't like it. I would use the uh, individual output with the uh, aux channels, but I don't think my MacBook could take it, so I just do most of my processing within this mixer and use it as a stereo plugin, which I wish I could do otherwise, but I can't afford a new laptop at the moment. 
And on the kick drum, I use the guillotine preset, which I find is a really nice one. It gives you that really nice thumpy sound, but it also has a really clear high end and really brings out just the sound of the kick. Um, I sometimes tweak the settings a bit. I can't remember what I did to this, but I think I just upped the, the high mids on the EQ, cut out some of the really low frequencies. I turned down the sub kick mic because I find it makes it sound a bit flabby sometimes and I completely took out the other two snare drum mics because I don't know what the hell that one is and when I'm miking up a drum kit anyway I never record the bottom of the snare, I only do the top because I don't really like the sound of the snares ringing when any other part of the drum kit is touched and on the snare drum I use the ring tone preset which can make any snare sound like Lamb of God really which is quite handy and it really makes it come out in the mix and I'll just quickly show you how that sounds by itself without any guitars or anything and here it is I mean that doesn't sound too special by itself but you know once you hear the guitars come in it makes a bit more sense and in this track here I've got basically a guitar track playing a version of the first riff it's just playing the bit that is in bar 5 I think and it's just a repeated basically a semitone below an octave on the low A flat string which is it's using my usual preset on Pod Farm, but uh, I've got a preset on the EQ here, which is called Megaphone EQ. I've just slightly brought it up a bit so it's a bit louder, and uh, that just makes it gives it that really lo-fi sound that you hear a lot in this genre as well. And I've got some automation on here. I'm going from hard left to hard right with the pan, and the volume is going from just regular up to plus six. I'm sure you can make it more than that, but I don't really know how. I've got a slight amount of exciter on there just to bring out the high end a bit, and I always find it just gives a bit more sheen to a mix. I've got the same setting, just a different EQ on my main guitars, and I'll show you how that all sounds as a section now then. I've got an IDM kit, but I'll go into that later. And here is just another riff. I've mess, you know, I mess around with the pulse of the rhythm a bit. Just makes it a bit more interesting, more fun to play, and most importantly, more fun to listen to. Uh, here is a riff where I use the weeper, but very slightly. I use the weeper on my guitar tone in Pod Farm to give it more of a twang, going for a sort of tesseracty, sugary sound. I'm not sure if those are adjectives, but. Here it is, and you can see here where I've changed the beat around. I usually do this with all my projects, but this is still fairly early on. I've got a lot more to do to this, and I'll keep you updated with it as I improve it. But you can see I've got different parts here rather than just looping as I did earlier on. I add sort of ghost notes on the snare or different fills, which just makes it that bit more interesting and uh, makes it sound a little bit more professional. But for the moment, this is just a really rough demo, so I'm looping most of the stuff. And here's that riff. I mean, it really needs some bass on there, but I've only got a crappy old four string bass that wouldn't really handle this low tuning. And uh, yeah, if anyone would, is good at working things out with their ear and would like to track some bass for me then feel free I can send you the track, I can send you a WAV file or an mp3 or whatever and uh, if you get it back to me as soon as possible you'll get full credit on the, the next upload but it'd be really great to have some other people collaborate on my work and here is a similar thing to the breakdown that is earlier in the song and I've gone for a quite sort of periphery style sound here because Bulb is one of my biggest inspirations as a producer and as a guitarist. You know, he's an absolute hero. And uh, 
Periphery's album was excellent, especially the instrumental version. If you haven't heard it, you should definitely go out and buy it. And Tesseract's new EP as well, that's great. But here I've added the glitchy drums and the full effect. And on this I've got a delay, a delay designer. I experimented with distortion on it, but it didn't really sound too great. But here I've got the delay designer with the uh, eighth note dotted resonate setting, which just makes it sound a bit more robotic and uh, glitchy. I'll show you those drums by themselves first. And this is, I basically got this.